What's up YouTube, it's Ghostwriter15 back at it again with another GOAT format video. Today's video is going to be about the top 5 mistakes I see GOAT format players making. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Starting off at number 5, we have forgetting to add Sinister Serpent. You see this happen more often than it should. I've played many players at locals and there's been plenty of times when my opponent has forgotten their Sinister Serpent and it's been very very important. Forgetting your Serpent leaves you vulnerable to cards like Delinquent Duo, Spirit Reaper, and Dawn Deluke. Another card that can punish you for forgetting Serpent is Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. There might be times when you also top deck cards like Graceful or Tribe Infecting Virus, and you end up discarding real cards when you could have been discarding Sinister Serpent instead. So forgetting your Sinister can be the difference between losing and winning. So now on to mistake number 4, adding back your Sinister Serpent. You might be thinking, Ghost, didn't you just say forgetting Serpent is a mistake? So how is adding back Serpent a mistake? Well, believe it or not, there's times when you shouldn't be adding it back to your hand. The most common time you shouldn't be adding it back is when you draw for turn and you're at 3 cards in hand with Serpent in your grave. Let's say you have a hand of BLS, Heavy Storm, and Nobleman of Crossout. Your opponent has 1 back row and a set monster with less than 3000 life points. During your standby phase, you add Serpent to your hand, and your opponent flips over Trap Dust Shoot, and now your win condition, aka BLS, is gone. Another example when you shouldn't be adding Serpent to your hand is when you're playing against Panda Burn and have no way of making use of the Serpent with cards such as Tribe or Regeki Break. Adding back Sinister to your hand is going to increase the damage you take by cards like Secret Barrel. In the burn matchup, every life point matters, and adding back Sinister Serpent to your hand can sometimes be the difference between losing and winning versus burn. Moving on to mistake number 3, not knowing how the battle phase works. So what I mean by this is that certain cards can only be activated during a specific timing during the battle phase while other cards can be activated in more than one sub-step of the battle phase. The most common example is, let's say player A attacks with Blade Knight, player B activates Sakuretsu armor, player A responds with Solemn Judgment. Player B has a set Regeki break but doesn't use it because they think the window is closed for them to activate it, thanks to Solemn Judgment. This is incorrect and is causing many players to lose games that they should have probably won. The reason you can still Regeki break here is because after Solemn Resolves, you don't immediately move to the damage step. After the attack declaration, there's still the battle step, which is something that allows you to activate many different trap cards such as Regeki Break, Phoenix Wing Wing Blast, or Ring of Destruction. However, with that being said, you won't be able to activate something like Sakuretsu Armor because that has a very specific activation window. It can only be activated on the attack declaration, so once Solemn resolves, you can no longer use another Sakuretsu. Knowing how the battle phase works is very crucial to competitive GOAT format or even just Yu-Gi-Oh in general. Moving on to mistake number 2, not using turn player priority. This really only comes up in one scenario but it's very important. Let's say you draw to 4 cards in hand and you have a quick play spell in your hand such as MST or scapegoats and your opponent has a set spell or trap card. You declare your phases as usual and once you move from draw phase to standby phase your opponent flips up a trap dust shoot and now you lose your only monster in hand. As turn player you're allowed to activate spell speed to effects before your opponent can. By doing so you can activate quick play spells in your hand such as MST or scapegoats and that will now put you at 3 cards in hand which prevents your opponent from activating dust shoot. Keep in mind that you'll need to do this before your opponent activates the trap dust shoot or else it won't work. For example. Trap does shoot as Chainlink 1 and you respond with MSC or GOATS as Chainlink 2. In this scenario, Dust Shoot will still resolve as normal because although you no longer have 4 cards in hand, you did have 4 during the activation of Dust Shoot, so it'll resolve as normal. Don't make this mistake. The easiest way to avoid this is by declaring that you're using turn player priority. And now, the number one mistake I see GOAT format players doing is overcommitting and undercommitting. I know it can sometimes be hard to tell when to play it safe or to go all out, but there's ways you can do your best to make the right decision. The first thing to do is check your opponent's graveyard. Be aware of cards such as Mirror Force or Torrental Tribute before coming up with a decision. 
The next thing you can do is keep track of your opponent's set cards. Depending on what you do, that can rule out certain cards as to what the set cards might be. One last tip I can recommend is looking at the risk and reward outcomes. So for example, let's say you're about to deck out in two turns, but you have an opportunity to go all out and win the game. Your opponent has a back row, but Mirror Force and Torrento has not been used. They still have two cards in hand and eight left in deck. Statistically, the chances of them not having Mirror Force or TT is still in your favor. Not only do you increase their odds of drawing it by not going all out, they might also draw something else that can disrupt you from doing so, and there might even be a chance that they don't even main deck Mirror Force or Torrental Tribute. In this situation, the reward is much higher than the risk to go all out for game. Keep in mind, in some scenarios, the opposite might be true. The risk is higher than the reward. It really just depends on the game state, and by using the tips I mentioned, it'll make your decisions a bit easier. So there you have it. These are the top 5 most common mistakes I see Go format players doing. Let me know if I missed anything on this list. And let me know in the comment section what mistakes have you been noticing players often making. If you like this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. This is Ghostwriter15 signing out.